Hey guys, Budokul asked me to do a couple short videos for their Budo capsule series, uh, but um, you know, unfortunately, there has been no training these days here in Tokyo uh, because of COVID-19. So there isn't much I can film for you, actually. Um, instead, I thought I would um, explain the kata I like, which is a uh, kata number five of the Mokuju Tai Tono kata. Uh, let's have a look at it first and then I'll explain it later. This was filmed at the Nippon Budokan in Tokyo a couple years ago at the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the All Japan Jukendo Federation. I do the role of Uchi with the Mokuju and Alex Bennett with the sword does she. There are five kata in Jukendo, totalizing 34 forms and involving three different weapons the Mokuju, or bayonet on rifle, the Tanken, or detached bayonet, and then To, or Gunto, which is the military sword. This look, looks like a katana, basically, and you do the kata with a Bokuto. One peculiar aspect of Jukendo's kata is when two different weapons face each other. They both get to be in turn Shi and Uchi, meaning they both get to be on the winning and the losing side. The idea behind that is um, you also learn a lot by being on the losing side if you analyze why you lose uh, the fight. In this kata number five, the sword is on the winning side. He steps in and tries to push the Mukuji away in order to take the center and attack. Uh, but the Mukuji reads it and steps back to avoid the push. The Mukuji doesn't waste that opportunity and thrust at the sword immediately after. However, the sword evades with a Suryage and strikes a winning door. What this kata actually emphasizes is not the sword Suryage and door. This is very well executed, of course, but that's not the point of the kata. Here, what's important is to highlight a crucial mistake made by the Mokuju. When the Mokuju is first pushed away, he steps back to evade the push. And by doing so, he offers a lot of room and time for the sword to maneuver him. As the Mokuju stepped diagonally to his right when evading the push, he would have closed the gap and reduced considerably the effectiveness of the sword and probably won the encounter. As often in Japanese kata, the key element is not the final strike, but how you create the conditions that lead to that final strike. This is often achieved by posture and footwork, rather than by manipulating your weapon. If you focus on the weapon too much, you'll miss the point. But anyway, that's all for today and uh, good luck to the Budokul project and stay safe everybody. Thank you. Cheers.